Hello, I'm Kate Larson, and with me today is Ray Seifert, the design coordinator for the Beatery Craft Products. And we're here together today to introduce you to the world's largest selection of craft jewelry components. Ray, tell us a little bit about the Beatery to start with. Well, the Beatery is a division of Green Plastics Corporation. Green Plastics Corporation is the leading supplier to costume jewelry manufacturers. We're located in Hope Valley, Rhode Island, and uh, the company happens to be an ESOP. We're owned by the employees. Do you manufacture all of these products? We manufacture everything in the United States, and uh, we have probably the largest selection of beads and stones in the world. Let's show some of them because they're so beautiful. Well, thank you. Well, our most popular thing right now is probably the faceted stones, and they're available in many different shapes and colors and sizes. They're used on this uh, hair band here. That's beautiful. Thank you. They're also on the shirt that I'm wearing. In addition to the faceted stones, we have cabochons. And these earrings are made out of cabochons. I'm yeah. not sure I know exactly what a cabochon is. Could you explain that? Sure, I'd be glad to, Kay. A cabochon is a piece that's foiled back and has a domed or a rounded top as opposed to a faceted stone, which has these oh. little cuts on it that you can see here. So the cabochons are always smooth on top. The cabochons are always smooth on top. They're not necessarily all transparent colors like this. These gold pieces here, which are plated, are also called cabochons, and they're also available in opaque colors. Okay. And in addition to those, we have gemocyte stones. This brooch here is made out of gemocyte stones. Looks like lapis. The blue pieces are supposed to be lapis. They're imitation lapis. And uh, we have other colors like turquoise and jade. Wyoming jade. Uh, we also have a piece that's black and white. This looks like obsidian. And those are beautiful. Thank you. All right, then we go next to the acrylic mirrors. They're so popular now. An acrylic mirror is basically just a flat piece that is foiled on the back. They make an excellent base for making jewelry. You'll notice on this pair of earrings here, we've just put some uh, spaghetti beads in gold, and uh, the beads, the uh, mirrors are used for a base. They come in a variety of shapes and sizes. They're square, oval, and many others. And beautiful colors. Yes, very brilliant colors. In addition to those, I have with us today here Old World Pony Beads. Now, the beadery has always had regular pony beads, but the Old World Pony Beads are something that's very new. These are antiqued, and uh, the designs kind of reflect different ethnic cultures. They're available in uh, the gold and silver finishes, also in terracotta, light and dark turquoise, and ivory. And these earrings here are made with some of the Old World Pony Beads in the gold antiqued. They do look just like antique jewelry. They're beautiful. Yes. One nice thing about these old world pony beads is they do have a large hole. So you can use them with cord or leather lace or uh, rat tail. Anything that's a little bit thicker will string through the old world pony bead. Possibly even strips of fabric. Yes. Yes. For garment embellishment, together. definitely denim. Well, those are absolutely wonderful. Now, in addition to supplying us with all of the components for jewelry, you also have a wonderful teaching library. Yes, we certainly do. We have the Beatery Craft Project Library, and uh, it's available in 10 different titles with more to come. Uh, Each one of the books is beautifully illustrated with complete detailed instructions. Yes, we pride ourselves on our directions. We try to have them illustrated as well as having the verbal uh, directions. We call out every component that's needed. We give suggestions for colors and uh, you'll find that they're very complete, very detailed. And of course the front and the back features the beautiful color pictures. The color the photos to show you exactly what the finished product's going to look like. I'm sure this varies from book to book, but about how many projects would you say? Uh, about 12 or 13 in most books. We so try to put a lot in there. A complete list of them. Yes. Let's go through each one of the books and talk a little bit about the featured projects in there because they're mostly done in a theme, aren't yes, they? Yes, great. Let's start with American West. Okay, American West is the book that you just showed the inside of. And uh, American West uses a uh, Again, the gemocyte stones, they're glued on these conchos here. Uh, this is a triple triangle shape, and uh, 
You're using the leather lace strung between the conchos and there's some silver rings and uh, you can make this in uh, whatever size you want for your waist. In addition, we have uh, a brooch that's made with uh, suede pieces and there's beads cabochons, gemocyte stones in that chevron shape and the dark coral. There's a bracelet, which is uh, strung actually on elastic cord, so this is stretchy. And you have the gemocyte stones in the square shape. In addition to that, we also have design for a bolo tie, which has uh, gemocyte stones and cabochons and pony beads that are dangling down from some leather. Another belt pattern and plenty of earrings. Earrings are always real popular. And barrettes. barrettes. So many people are wearing barrettes yes. now. And here we're f uh, featuring again some of the gemocyte stones. Yes, that's the arrowhead there, Kay, in Wyoming Jade. Uh, the suede strips have the pony beads strung on there and copper and ivory and the jade pony beads. That one's very easy to make and it looks great. They're really elegant. Most of the projects in the book I find are really, have a wonderful elegant look to them. Why don't we talk a little bit about Southwest? Tell me about that. It's so popular today, not only in jewelry, but also in yes, fashion Yes, Southwest certainly is very popular. Again, we're using a lot of the gemocyte stones in different shapes. In addition to the gemocyte stones, we're using suede, and on some of the pieces, we're using feathers. Uh, there's a lot of copper in this book, a lot more than there is in the American West. And we have some designs for girls. The uh, two pieces in the front with the pink and the turquoise are cowgirl uh, barrette and uh, necklace, and there's also some uh, smaller barrettes, directions for those in there too. Now are the projects for girls simple enough that the girls could actually well, string some of those themselves? The girls could probably string some. They'd probably need some help from their mom. So it'd be a great project for a mom and daughter to do together. Work together yes. on? Crafting does yes. that. Brings the family Brings together. Brings the family together, right. What about exotic jewelry? Oh, exotic, we have that. That book is right here. And uh, the exotic book features a lot of designs that are using the old world pony beads. This barrette here is one of my favorites. Uh, the beads are used a little differently here. They're strung on head pins, and the old world pony beads have the pin going through them, and then they're glued on the barrette. Now those are faceted beads yes. with a hole in the center. Yes, faceted beads and uh, old world pony beads, and these little gold ones here are called mushroom beads. In Renaissance colors, that's beautiful yes. and so elegant. This is another pair of earrings. Uh, uses a tassel, which is real popular in fashion now. There's uh, the old world pony beads, the faceted stones, faceted beads, some wire, and a black tassel. I like the, the beautiful look here on the barrette and the bracelet that feature the turquoise look. This here is, uh, again, the gemocyte stones in the hourglass shape and the oval shape uses a lot of wire and chain, which is also very popular. Chain can be bought in uh, craft stores. They sell it by the yard now. Well, let's move on to another book. Um, if we go to exotic, maybe we should go from that to something really elegant. Do you have a book that features some elegant we designs? We certainly do for evening. <laughs> <laughs> okay. First of all, let's look at the book and the jewelry that's featured from that one. Okay. We have a lot of pieces that are made, again, with mirrors and cabochons. Uh, the, the green brooch and earrings there. If you notice, um, wrapped around those mirrors is yarn, which is kind of a little different component there. We have uh, oval-shaped cabochons glued on there, and uh, we also have a necklace that's strung out of black beads with a gold accent. Uh, we have some earrings and a brooch that are made with uh, cabochons that are, again, in emerald and in the fuchsia. And what is the silver that forms the base for those. Okay, those silvers are, they're rings, a uh, silver ring, oh. and the cabochons are glued on top. Now the uh, pieces that are featured on the back cover of the book uh, are the uh, black pumps and the evening bag. Someone can buy an inexpensive pair of black pumps and an evening bag and turn it into a really elegant uh, set of accessories to match the colors that they picked for their outfit. Or also having the same um, jewels 
attached to their wearables like you're doing exactly, with the outfit that exactly. you have on. So you can tie the entire ensemble right, together. Right. You can nev <laughs> never be too glitzy. Um, tell me about fashion jewelry. Oh. Everybody loves making their own jewelry. Yes, yes. Fashion jewelry, we have some neat ideas. Uh, that's that book over there. Um, some of those uh, ideas use not only mirrors, but there's a lot of wire used there. That's been a very popular book for us. That uh, piece that you're holding up there is called Deco, and uh, the design was inspired by the uh, diner theme. I don't know if you've ever seen the designs yes. on diners with that kind of a swirl there. And then the uh, red earrings in the front, it's called Fashion Notes. And the wires used very creatively there to look like musical notes on a scale. This is a beautiful one. This is a brooch done yes. with a combination, combination of... combination of beads and stones and wire. And this is such a beautiful fashion statement. Look at the colors in here. That's very simple. It looks complicated, but it's not. It's made with acrylic mirrors and acrylic stones and a little bit of craft wire. Beatery also sells craft wire, and that's ours. Now, most of those feature the mirrors, and they're so popular in jewelry. Yes. As you said, they make a nice base for adding other things to them, um, in addition to just having the mirror on there by itself. Well, let's move on to really mod jewelry. Yes, oh. <laughs> <laughs> you have some wild things we in the mod book. We certainly do. The, the 60s are back, and if you'll notice, the flower look is very popular in the mod book. The flower power, we have uh, some daisy earrings that are made with uh, cabochons with a faceted stone in the middle, and we have... Uh, the hairband that's decorated with those pink and black colors that were so <laughs> popular back then. Right. Uh, and uh, the black pieces in the middle, they're a little unusual. Those are the mirror shapes that are done in an opaque black. So that's a, a neat accent on the uh, shiny pink. I like the uh, ball theme that's here in uh, the earrings that I'm holding and also the necklace over yes. there. Yes, now the gold piece at the top, that's a cabochon that's been uh, plated. That's a gold plated cabochon and the pieces that are glued on the bottom are glued onto gold discs and they're faceted stones in uh, topaz. What do you use to uh, fasten the jewelry pieces together? Is there any one thing that is used more than others? I mean, do you use a hot glue gun? Uh, we, d we do use a hot glue gun some. Uh, you can also use an epoxy. You have to be careful that you don't use a glue that has uh, a chemical in it that will attack the back of the foil, which could possibly uh, work on it. There's a chemical called cyacrylate, which can be a problem. If you use something like uh, airplane glue or something like that, uh, okay. don't, don't use it with the stones. So at this point, we would say be sure that you check within your book that, and use the recommended things right, that are included with right. the instructions. And there are a lot of glues books. on the market that are recommended for use with acrylic stones. You've got such a wonderful selection of things. It boggles my mind, but you have some other things that you've brought along with this. Some things for the holidays. Tell me a little bit about yes, holidays. Well, of course, when the beatery, it's always Christmas at the beatery. <laughs> <laughs> we work on that year round and we brought with us today a little village from the Christmas Reflections book and uh, we call it the Beateryville Railroad. Uh, if you'll notice in the foreground there, there's a little train that's made with uh, acrylic mirrors, has little faceted stones for wheels and faceted stones for accents and mirrors for windows on the train. Uh, there's a little train station, has a little bead on a string garland along the roof line there. What about the trees? Well, the trees are, are pretty neat. They're made out of a uh, bead on a string, which is a flare bead. They're cut in little pieces, and uh, they're twisted together with wire, the little trunks. Now, that's featured on the front of the book, but on the back of the book, you featured Christmas ornaments, and these are using mirrors again. Using mirrors again. Here's one here. It's the other one. If you notice, they have the three-dimensional look because they've got the little square mirrors on the side. This design here almost reminds me of a quilt. It does. And that, again, is using mirrors and just glued together with Mirrors string. glued together and a little piece of cord to suspend them from the tree. Well, that covers Christmas. Let's move to another uh, holiday. How about Halloween? Halloween, we have a book for that, too. <laughs> Look at the beautiful masks that Ray has brought featured in the Halloween Masquerade instruction book. Tell us a little bit about those. 
Well, the masks are made from uh, masks that really you can purchase them anywhere. Uh, they're uh, the one with the uh, black and the hot pink. Uh, the, there's a design that's been painted on there with hot pink uh, fabric paint with a gold fabric at paint accent. And there's uh, faceted stones on there that are in neon and also uh, other transparent colors. Get the little ribbon hanging down. The green and the turquoise mask has uh, stones on there with a little different finish, which is the Aurora Borealis finish. Uh, which is, uh, I think, unique to the beatery, has kind of a, a look of a little different colors when you look at it. Not only do you see the green and the turquoise, but you see a little hint of other colors. Now, the black and the orange mask has a lot of faceted stones on it, a lot of very exotic feathers with the nice ribbon hanging down. And the last mask has a, a beak on it, and uh, the stones that are glued on there are glow-in-the-dark stones, Kate, so they're like perfect for Halloween for costumes and uh, make it real easy to see. Although the feature may perhaps be the masks, there's also jewelry included in there. We have a little pumpkin necklace. Absolutely, the pumpkin necklace. Coming out of our jewelry box, and here we uh, have some absolute... Pumpkin earrings with the little pumpkin heads. How about spiders? Spider earrings, <laughs> uh, made again with the beadery craft wire, cabochons and beads glued on a mirror. And this one here we I call brought. Bat Over Skyline. It's got <laughs> a little glow-in-the-dark moon and uh, mirrors for the uh, rooftops and a little bat floating by. These make really cute trick-or-treat gifts if you don't want to give candy to the kids. Oh, that's a wonderful or idea. Or party favors. Decorations for presents and gifts. Absolutely. <laughs> What about projects that children can do themselves? Do you have some instruction books we, that feature pr children's we projects? We do. We do. We have projects that are excellent for that. The holiday jewelry is a good book. Holiday jewelry is great because it's excellent for scouts. You've got something for every month. Every holiday is covered there. Uh, Let's take a look at those okay. and tell us a little bit about the pins that are featured. Okay. We have... Uh, Pins for every month, as I said, there's 12 projects in there. There's a uh, Valentine pin, which is done with a little lace and the heart-shaped mirror. There's, uh, for St. Patrick's Day, the uh, shamrocks are made out of heart stones and the Aurora Borealis finish. For those of us who are Irish. I'll uh, make, <laughs> make sure you get a pair to wear in March. And uh, there's a beautiful pin for Mother's Day, which features a cameo that's manufactured by the beatery. We have a, a line of cameos that people probably aren't too familiar with in different sizes, in different colors. It's offered in pink and black and ivory in addition to that. We have uh, some pins that look like acorns for the fall with cabochons. And at the top of them are uh, oak leaves, which are also manufactured by the beatery. We have leaves that are in other styles like maple and uh, dogwood. And of course, we have the earrings there for Christmas made out of mirrors. And uh, also there's some faceted stones glued on there for ornaments on your Christmas trees. And a patriotic pin uh, that's been so popular patriotic this pin, year. Patriotic pin, yes, for the golf thing. The red, white, and blue was certainly very popular. Well, if we're talking about children's projects, we certainly have to move over to the sweet shop because you really have some wonderful projects included in this book. Yes, there's 13 projects there for moms and girls to make together. And these are done in the bright neon colors. Take a look at this. <laughs> well, that hair bow was made out of uh, black grow grain ribbon. It has neon faceted stones on it and dangling down from, the ri from it are uh, thinner pieces of ribbon with uh, heart-shaped pony beads in uh, neon colors and black. Now here is something that they certainly could be involved in doing themselves because working with the ribbon and the little beads, just string them just on very easy. Again, on. that's a large hole bead, so no needle is needed or anything. What about this project for a really young person? Oh, I think those are really <laughs> cute. Those are little clowns. Um, the the heads on these beads are also uh, heads are also made by the beadery. We call those headliners. They have happy little faces on them. They're also available for animal faces for projects. Uh, little animals also. So the bead actually has that face printed the, right the on it? The face is printed right on there, yes. So it comes in different sizes, time? yes. Look at this beautiful project. Now this looks like one for a little bit older, perhaps a teenager. Yes, yes it is. It's a heart-shaped mirror with stones glued on it, uh, surrounded by uh, 
wire edged ribbon. Uh, the fuchsia color is one of my favorites. Those are beautiful. Now on the bottom here, you've simply sandwiched the ribbon That's between right. two gemstones. That's right. I have the, the two stones glued back to back around a piece of thin ribbon. The Again, project is very easy to make. One of the uh, nice things about the books is that there are so many design ideas in there that give people a way to use all of the products that you make. Absolutely. These are adorable. <laughs> I have a little granddaughter that I know would love a pair like this. Tell us a little bit about this. Well, this is, this is a simple project to make. These are little charms, and they're made by stringing the beads on head pins. There's a sunburst bead, the heart pony bead, and round beads. Again, the little headliner beads for little clown heads. They're uh, strung on the head pins, they're bent over these jump rings, and then they're strung on the shoelaces with barrel beads in between. If you notice, we've uh, laced the shoes a little differently. We've got the heart pony beads here, and uh, then they're tied on the end. Now, none of this is permanent. This all can all be taken off in case you want to change the color scheme of the design. That's a great idea. And we've sewn some uh, heart pony beads around the cuff of the sock for a little extra color. Now, in addition to this, if we're talking about wearables for little ones, how about a project like this? What little one wouldn't love? <laughs> this is so cute. It's just a little sleeveless undershirt, and uh, these are really popular in the boutiques. You just take some lace, and uh, it's sewn around there, and uh, then all these stones are put on with fabric glue and there's some beads and stones that are sewn on thread at the top. There's two different designs in the book for making different little undershirts. Let's talk a little bit about cost. If you were to buy something like this in a boutique, you know you'd be talking about thirty to forty dollars. You would. You definitely would. What about making the project you, great? Well, not including the cost of the undershirt, I think you could make this project for just a couple of dollars. So one of the things that you're featuring, in addition to the wide variety that the company offers, is the inexpensive way that you can put the project Together. Inexpensive, and also you get the colors that you want. You use your daughter's favorite colors <laughs> or granddaughter's favorite Can colors. Can you tell me how your books are packaged and sold for distributors? Yes, the books have a suggested retail price of $3.99 each. Uh, they're sold in dozens, and the dozens are shrink wrapped for uh, distributors to uh, handle them a little easier, and they're sold uh, a dozen per title. Perhaps what we should do at this particular point, now that we've introduced the complete line of all ten books in the library, is actually do a project. Would you like to do that? Absolutely. Let's Could do we one. start with something from the sweet shop, possibly the tennis shoes? I think that's your favorite, isn't it? Yes, it is. Okay. <laughs> Ray, in addition to the obvious tennis shoe and laces, what other supplies do we need for this project? Well, in all of our craft project books, uh, we list the materials needed very carefully. And there's a few beads from the beadery that you need. Uh, there's the little headliner bead that we spoke about before. Uh, there's the regular pony bead, the heart-shaped pony bead, the sunburst bead, the six millimeter round bead. There's some jewelry findings here. These are head pins in either silver or gold and jump rings. In addition to these, you need a few tools to make it easier. There's a pair of long nose pliers, wire cutters, and round nose jeweler's pliers. Now, how are these different from a regular needle nose Well, pliers? if you notice, the needle nose pliers have like a blunt end. These pliers here have a rounded end, and they're important to take the head pin and bend them over into a loop. When you're turning that yes, edge over to yes, hold the bead that, on. That's how things are made in the jewelry industry. What about the first Part. What's our first project? Doing okay, this? the first thing we're going to do is make these little charms, and uh, they're strung on head pins. Now, this is what we're talking yes. about the little strings on the bottom yes. there. Okay, and we have just a few beads to add on to the pin. Okay, so you take a head pin, and you're going to string on first a six millimeter round bead, then you're going to string on the sunburst bead. After the sunburst bead, you string on the heart pony bead. This one's easy to get on because it's got the large hole. <laughs> and uh, then another six millimeter round bead. Okay. And uh, then you end up with a piece like this one here. Now at this point, you're going to have to hold all these beads together. Since I'm right-handed, I'm going to hold them with my left hand. Okay. You're going to take these round nose pliers and bend the end of the head pin over into a loop. Okay. 
Now I can see the value of There's that round the value. edge. It makes yes. the little rounds here. Okay. Then we're going to take one of these jump rings. These jump rings are usually very soft. You can almost just open them with your fingers. Except for this one. <laughs> <laughs> take a pair of pliers, open it. Okay. Then you're going to string the jump ring in through the loop and then close it. And uh, there you have your little charm. And then the procedure is very similar for doing the one like this with exactly. the little faces on. Exactly. And then how do you actually put them onto the tennis shoe? Okay. I have a pair of tennis shoes here. And you're going to string the uh, little charm on the lace and in between each of the charms there's a pony bead. I kind of... Oh, I see it. Sure. I kind of vary the color order. String it like so. Then you string on the uh, little clown face charms. Like so. And continue that And all just the way continue across. on. I have okay, I'll move this another one over. shoe here where they've all been strung on right across the front. You make sure that your uh, shoelaces are centered so you have an even amount. And then we're going to string on these heart pony beads. These laces are laced a little differently. I've strung a heart pony bead on both of the laces and pushed it down here. Then I split them apart. Bring your shoelace through here. Oh, I see. You're actually forming this piece down the center. Exactly. And each one of those then would be threaded through both shoelaces? Through both shoelaces. Okay. And here I'm going to do it again. Probably put them through one at a time. They fit better. And as they slide through, each one of them makes the ridge along the top edge. And when those are all done, there's just a matter of um, tying one on the end of the lace with a knot on either side of it. Tie one on the end with a knot, and then if you want to add a little extra color, you notice on the socks, I, you can either sew or glue on some more heart pony beads. Nice thing about this is it isn't permanent in case your kids want to change their color scheme or decorate their sneakers another way for another occasion. And I'm sure that all of your instructions are suggested colors and sizes. Suggested colors, they can use whatever color they want. Also in the book to go along with this, there is a barrette, which is real cute, that goes along in the same project, the Happy Face Barrette. And these, this project again and the barrette are from the book called The Sweet Shop, and it's just one of the collection of 10 books in the library. If you'd like more information on any of the products that you've seen or the complete library of books from the Beatery, you can write to the Beatery Craft Products, Post Office Box 178, Hope Valley, Rhode Island, 02832. Or you can call us at area code 401-539-2432. Ray, thank you so much for opening my eyes to the wonderful possibilities that are available when we use the products from the Beatery. Well, it's been my pleasure, Kay, and I hope that when you think of beads or stones, you'll think of Beatery craft products. I know I will.